Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm Jukka Pirtila. I'm uh, presenting here joint work with the chair, Maria Jouste, and uh, Tina Kaidu from the Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, Joseph uh, Kello, also from URA, and then uh, our colleague Pia Rattenhuber from Union Wide. And our title is um, Taxpayer Response to Greater Progressivity Evidence from a Personal Income Tax Reform in Uganda. So I want to shift the focus a little bit. Of, uh, I mean, we are not bypassing revenue here, but we are also worrying a little bit about the distribution of, um, of, the, of the tax burden across the uh, taxpayers. So by way of motivation, uh, uh, one notices when one looks at the data on the income tax rates and also on the revenues, uh, that the uh, personal income tax rates in the sub-Saharan African countries, SSA for short, uh, are low in international comparison. So here's information from a study by uh, McNabb and Granger. Uh, what you can see, uh, uh, the, uh, the bottom line, the yellowish line, is the average uh, highest marginal tax rate on, 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 on personal incomes uh, in African countries, and it's close to 30%, which is significantly below uh, to what it is in, uh, in the OECD countries. So that would be then the, uh, the line here, the, uh, uh, is that maroon? I'm always a very, very bad with, with colors. But anyway, so there's a big gap, and the rates are low. On the other hand, we know that income inequality in, in African countries is substantial. So here's data, apologies for the small numbers, but here's data from a set of countries. Uganda is not included, but Uganda wouldn't be very different, I, I would guess. Which shows, first of all, how high uh, the income inequality uh, Gini coefficient is for, for some African countries and how, how little it's reduced uh, by the tax system. So the disposable income inequality is almost equally as high as the market income inequalities. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, the, and the tax system doesn't even do much uh, for, 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 for poverty reduction. On the contrary, it can even increase poverty numbers because also some of those who are close to the poverty line need to pay the tax. So, of course, this quest begs the question of whether it would make sense uh, to raise the tax rates uh, for the high income earners in the African countries. Uh, there's also uh, uh, some optimal tax background that we can look into when thinking of taxes and then setting the tax rates, also including for the top income earners. And this is, um, uh, this is work. Uh, uh, stemming from the Nobel Prize winning uh, uh, economist Jim Merlis and much of subsequent work, uh, which shows that the socially desirable top tax rate uh, is relatively high if the inequality aversion in society is at the high level or if the pre-tax incomes are unequally distributed. On the other hand, uh, it, would be, uh, it would have to be a, a lower one if there are uh, major efficiency losses from those high tax rates. So if uh, high tax rates then lead people to report lower incomes to the tax authority. So uh, it would be key uh, to know uh, uh, some of these, uh, the, the quantify these things, uh, especially uh, how reactive the tax base is to changes to tax rates. And that's what we, what we try to do in this paper. Uh, there's little prior evidence on, on, on how the tax base reacts when the top tax rate is changed from developing countries. So that's, uh, uh, we would argue, our contribution to the academic literature is then to, to, to provide that sort of evidence. So what do we do in the paper? Uh, we use the uh, Uganda Revenue Authority administrative tax data uh, to examine the so-called elasticity of taxable earned income 
and, and, and where we and, and we use the for the for, for the empirical analysis we zoom into the to the tax policy reform in 2012-13 uh, when among other things the Ugandan uh, uh, tax system was changed so that the top marginal tax rate was raised by 10 percentage points namely from 30 to 40 percent which is a substantial increase uh, for the uh, 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 in the tax system. So we want to gauge the, um, uh, the uh, revenue and inequality consequences of this policy change, taking into account those potential behavioral reactions that some of the taxpayers would be reporting lower incomes now after the re reform because the tax rate went up. Uh, why uh, did Uganda carry out this reform in our understanding, that was a response to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the fact that the tax system hadn't been changed for years. And in, when inflation had, had been going on, that had led to, to, uh, to an increase in the tax burden for the, for the, for the lower middle, medium, medium income earners. Uh, the, uh, the government wanted to alleviate this burden but recoup some of the revenues by, by increasing this, this tax rate uh, at the top. So it was a progressivity increasing tax reform. And, and a new top tax rate was introduced on persons earning more than 10 million uh, Uganda shillings a month, which uh, 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 is uh, at the ballpark of 3,000 USD. Uh, and, and, and given that the uh, average Ugandan taxpayer has relatively low incomes, this tax was actually a tax on the top 1% of the income earners, quite, quite closely to, to the top 1%. So here's information about how the, how the tax rate uh, schedule look like, looks like in Uganda. Uh, the, uh, this is the, um, do I have the pointer here? Yes, so, so these are the marginal tax rate schedules, and this is the average tax rate that increases uh, uh, more smoothly. So what we do in this paper, we really focus on the top group of income earners, and and we are looking at the uh, at, at those in, income earners who are about that uh, that threshold value whose marginal tax rate jumped by ten percentage points, and we are comparing their income developments to those who who are who are just below who continue to pay the 30% marginal tax rates on, on any additional income they, they would be earning. In the paper, we also look at the, some of the other groups affected by this reform, but in this talk, I'm now going to focus on the most salient aspect of the reform, which is the top 10%, or uh, top 1% uh, 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 increase. As I said, we use data from uh, uh, the administrative uh, records of the Uganda Revenue Authority. Uh, so the data include monthly payers you earn re returns uh, uh, f filed by the employers on behalf of the employees. Uh, we are covering five fiscal years in this analysis from 2010-11 to 2014-15. And, and a particular point that I, that I need to raise is that the while all the employers at that time had a unique tax identification number, uh, which means that we can, we can follow the same employer across time, uh, uh, not all employees had one. So that, that means that we are actually using the data in a cross-sectional manner when it comes to the employees. And which, is, which could be a disadvantage, but on the other hand we know uh, that the so-called panel econometric techniques using the, uh, using the individual level data could actually be uh, problematic because of the so-called mean reversion issue, which we, which we are going to bypass here when we are using the sort of cross-sectional approach. Uh, so the empirical approach is a, is a, is a, is a variation of a diff in diff, difference in differences design, uh, where we are uh, focusing uh, 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 to the tax reform of 20, 2012, uh, where we have two pre-reform years. Unfortunately, we, we don't have more of those pre-reform years because the, that's when the, when the digital uh, system started. And then we, have, when we look at the three post-reform years, as is, as is quite customary in the, in the literature. 
and we are comparing the so-called treated group, which is a top 1% of, uh, of taxpayers, and then we, are, when we have a comparison or a control group which, uh, uh, which consists of taxpayers who are then the next 4% of income earners. And uh, we express then the results as an elasticity of taxable income and this measures then the change in the reported earnings relative to the change in the one minus the marginal tax rate, namely the, the, net, of the uh, net of the tax rate. And when we do the analysis, uh, uh, when, we, when we actually use this narrow control group, uh, we do find that the, that the treated group's income declined more than the, than, the, than, the, than the comparison group incomes, but the decline was not statistically significant from zero. And on the right, you can see this event study type of plot, uh, which compares the income developments of the treated group relative to the uh, incomes of the control group, and, and, and the incomes decline, but then the confidence bands uh, 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 include zero, so this means that this is not statistically significant. However, if we were to use a broader control group, uh, we would be detecting a, a positive uh, uh, or significant reduction in the, in the incomes. But we, we feel that the narrow control group is more comparable to the, to, to, the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the treated group, and that's why these are our favored uh, results. However, uh, the uh, uh, macro level results, if you wish, hide some heterogeneity in the results. And, uh, and, and if we zoom in uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the taxpayers or to the employees not uh, employed by firms who are treated by the large or the medium taxpayer office, we actually find a significant negative impact on their, on their, on their incomes. However, we also find that in those firms where the top incomes decrease the most, there's also a sizable increase in dividend income, suggesting that there's some, something called income shifting going on in the firms, that some of the employees, rather than having salaries, get perhaps now more, more dividends out of this. This is partly speculation, but this is indicative uh, in the results. So often tax researchers worry about, I mean, what are the mechanisms that give rise to results? And we are saying that at this part of the mechanisms here uh, seems to suggest that some income shifting is taking place. And this is, of course, very different, di different from people actually reducing the actual effort. Because this can happen uh, even if the, the labor supply uh, uh, remains the same. We'll also, as I said, we also look at the revenue and inequality implications. And, uh, and uh, we come to the conclusion that the, the, that the reform as a whole contributed to revenues, so that increased revenues in, 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 the, uh, in the Ugandan case. We also find that even if uh, uh, the elasticity that we detect, 0 0.5, was significant, it would mean that the new top tax rate wouldn't be about the so-called Laffer uh, curve maximum, so that that would mean that the um, uh, that, that uh, the Uganda would would Uganda uh, government would increase revenue by lowering that tax rate. That wouldn't be the case. And then we also find uh, that the reform led to a mild reduction in the inequality or among the um, uh, salaried employees that we, that we are looking at. So before the reform, the uh, uh, the uh, Gini coefficient amounted to 0 0.635, uh, uh, and now after the reform, uh, it went down to uh, 0 0.606. So it's still high, but it's a little bit less than it used to be. Although if there's income shifting going on, some of this may not be real reduction in inequality. So that, with that caveat, uh, this, this result can be, can be seen. So I summarize before Maria shows me the zero sign. Uh, um, all right, so what we did, we investigated the 2012 reform in the Ugandan case. 
Uh, uh, in this presentation, we focused on the top group, the, the top 1% of income earners, but in the paper you can find results for the other group, groups as well. For our pre preferred empirical approach, we don't find a statistically significant reduction in top incomes, but we do find a significant impact among the smaller firms, maybe uh, then uh, 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 suggesting that some income shifting uh, uh, may have taken place. And then we find that the uh, reform, I think, was a positive one because it led to a reduction perhaps in inequality and it contributed to the revenues. So, uh, so we would argue that the results are informative also for similar uh, lower income African countries when they consider uh, reforming uh, their personal income tax systems. Thank, thank you, that's all.